Hi, I'm Tom, one of the assistants here at Pendle Golf Club, <clears throat> and today we're going to be looking at the chip shot, what it is, where to use it, uh, and a little bit of club selection as well. Firstly, a chip shot is a shot anywhere around the greens, 1 and 25 yards, uh, like this one we've got here, about 18 yards away, just off the green. Uh, you can use a variety of different clubs, uh, that's going to affect what happens to the ball, the trajectory, etc. Um, you also use it suitable to the shot you've got in front of you. So for example, if we've got this shot in front of us here, we're going to use something to get it on the floor a little bit quicker and roll it out more like a putt. So it's going to make things a little bit easier for us. We wouldn't try and play a higher lob shot because that's going to be a little bit harder to play. Um, but I have got a lob wedge here and a 7-iron to show you the two contrasting shots. Obviously lob wedge with more loft is going to be uh, landing it in the air about 75% of its, its way. 25% on the ground, rolling out. Vice versa, the 7-iron is going to be 25% in the air, 75% rolling out. Like I say, you can use pretty much any club, but I've shown you two different ones to show you the difference as well. Uh, you can use your lob wedge or a higher lofted club if you want to get over something like you've got a bit of water in your way, uh, a hazard, uh, a bunker, uh, a path, whatever it may be. Like I say, you use more your 7-iron for a bump and run scenario like this one we've got in front of us. Make it a little bit easier to get on the floor, like I say, to play it more like a putt. This shot is pretty much straight on target, we'll be aiming pretty much straight on target today. So, first thing, just go over everything very quickly. We want our aim to be straight on target, our grip to be neutral, our posture and stance, 70 30 on the left side. Descending angle of attack onto the ball, which means we get a consistent roll, consistent strike onto the ball, and then that's going to allow us to play the shot we're trying to, we're trying to play with the desired club we're going to use. So, firstly, going into a little bit more depth now, we're going to be looking at the aim. Aim is going to be affecting the club base, potentially a little bit of that swing path, uh, the centerness of strike, and the dynamic loft. We want our aim going straight towards our target, like I say, for this shot, very straight towards our target. We want our, our club face going straight towards our target. If our club face is aiming so this is square to our target, if our club face starts aiming right, that affects our club face, it opens up that club face, adding a little bit more loft onto the club face, potentially swinging a little bit more into out, which and also affecting our centre of strike. It's going to be catching it a little bit more out the heel, it's going to spin a little bit more when it gets onto the green. Loft is going to start right at our target, and also the dynamic loft is going to be increased. Vice versa, if we're that square, if we're closing that club face down, obviously that club face is now taking a bit of loft that club face, it's aiming left. Swing direction's got potential to be a little bit more out to in, and the center of strike is going to be affected. We're going to be catching it a little bit more out the toe, it's going to take a little bit of spin off it, uh, and it's going to potentially get, add a little bit more curvature. We Got to mention with a chip shot you don't want any curvature on the shot really or very little curvature and if we're adding a little bit of curvature it's going away from our target it's going to make our putt a little bit harder dynamic lofts also being decreased our grip and a hold is going to affect club face angle potentially a little bit of the swing path centerness of strike and the dynamic loft so we want a nice like I said we want a nice neutral hold so left hand on thumb running straight down towards the logo two knuckles and then right hand over and right thumb working, uh, looking straight down towards that logo again. Most golf clubs have a little bit of a logo or something down at the bottom. So that's your nice neutral hold. If we start getting a stronger grip, like I say, that's obviously going to affect the club face, like you can see there. So we can see three knuckles now. The right hand goes on. That club face is now shutting down. That's again potentially going to affect our swing path. It's going to be a little bit more out to in. The centre of strike. Obviously, we've got potential to hit that more out the more out the toe now, not necessarily, but potentially more out the toe, taking it more offline and taking a little bit more of the spin off it. And dynamic loft, obviously, as we're closing the face down, as we just said, is being decreased. Vice versa, if we've got a weak grip, if we've got one knuckle showing, right hand way over, that's going to open that club face right up. So again, we're adding loft onto that club face. Swing pass, a bit of potential to be coming a little bit more into out. And uh, a little bit more into out with our centre of strike being more towards the heel. 
again, adding a little bit more spin and spinning it more towards the right, away from our target. Our dynamic loft is being increased. With our posture and stance, we want, like we said before, we want a nice, narrow stance, just inside shoulders. Normally you'd have shoulder width apart. For a full shot, for a full seven iron, you'd be about shoulder width apart. We want to say just inside the shoulder width to control that speed nicely, get that nice pendulum motion. And our weight's going to be 70-30 so we can get a nice descending angle of attack onto the ball, get consistent striking, consistent roll, nice flight as we're going onto our green. So that's going to affect possibly our swing path direction, I'd say angle of attack, club head speed like we just mentioned, sensor of strike and a little bit of our dynamic loft. If we, like I say, if we've got a nice wide stance, we don't want this for the, for the shot, we're going to generate a little bit too much speed for the shot and you're never going to control your speed properly. So like we say, nice narrow stance, that's going to control our speed. Weight 70-30, that's going to get a nice angle of attack onto the ball. If our weight's a little bit more 70-30 favouring the right side, we find angle of attack's a little bit too shallow. Swinging a little bit, swing path's going to be potentially going to be swinging a little bit more into out. And we're going to be catching the bottom of that club instead of nicely out the middle, get that perfect roll every time onto the green. And it's also potentially adding a little bit more of that dynamic loft as we're coming up into the shot, adding dynamic loft. Vice versa, if we're 90 10 on the left side, so we're left side heavy, this is obviously for a right hand golfer, for a left hand golfer would be the other way around. We're going to be steep angle of attack, that's going to possibly then shift our path ever so slightly, potentially uh, shift our path a little bit more out to win. Like I say, the angle of attack is going to be a lot steeper. Potential to, for, your, for your club head speed to be increased a little bit as you're coming through, uh, getting a, and then it's coming out hot and low, so it's never going to be the right distance or attending target. Our centre of strike is going to be coming a little bit more out the top of the club, taking all the spin off it, so again it's just shooting out low and uh, really hot straight across the green, and then we're decreasing potentially that dynamic loft as well. Next, we're just teaching you about the ball position. Ball position we want just back of centre, like I say, so we can get that nice descending angle. base angle, swing path direction a little bit, uh, the angle of attack uh, greatly, the centre of strike is going to be affected and the dynamic loft. So as our ball position goes too far forward, angle of attack starts shallowing out too much, start catching too much of the bottom of the, bottom of the club, potentially, uh, potentially swinging a little bit more into out, which is then, which obviously we're trying to get straight towards our target, especially for a shot like this one. Sensors of strike, possibly going to start striking it a little bit more, like I say, on the bottom, it's going to come out a little bit lower. Potentially, come, you could get a little bit more, you could clip it quite nicely out the bottom, potentially get a little bit more spin. Like I say, majority of the time, we're going to be catching it right at the bottom of that club, which is going to shoot straight across the green, also adding a little bit of that dynamic loft as well, adding a little bit more dynamic loft to the shot. Uh, if our ball position is a little bit too far back, we're going to steepen that angle of attack, potentially swinging a little bit more out to in as we're coming in. So out to in, steepening that angle of attack. The uh, club pace is going to change a little bit, it's going to be de-lofted a little bit. So it's top down there if the path's going too far left, potentially a little bit too far left. Angle of attack, like I say, steepening, centerless for strike, it's going to become more out the top of the club, it's going to take all the spin that we have off it, so it's not going to be able to control the spin once it lands onto the green. And our dynamic loft is being decreased as we're coming in. Like I say, we're getting steep, dynamic loft's taken off it, we're not going to get consistent, nice roll, nice high trajectory. We're trying to play this lob shot onto the green, we're not going to be getting a 75% carry, 25% roll. It's going to be coming out a lot lower, a lot hotter, we're not going to control, be able to control our shot nicely how we want to. Lastly, we're going to look at the body alignment. So our body alignment, like we said, wants to be pretty much parallel to our target with that left foot ever so slightly withdrawn. So our feet and knees and hips are going to be ever so slightly open. Our shoulders are going to be nice and square to our target. This is going to affect massively our body alignment. So it's going to affect our swing path greatly. Potentially a little bit with our club face angle and possibly a little bit in club head, club head speed. So as we're close to our target, so as my feet, knees, hips, shoulders are shut to my target, I'm going to start swinging a little bit more into out. So obviously it's going to affect the swing path greatly. Possibly getting a little bit too shallow on, on, and, uh, through our shot. 
club face is potentially going to be a little bit more effective as well. It's not going flush towards our target. So we're possibly going to get a little bit of spin on the ball. We've got potential to add a little bit more speed and come out a little bit longer as we come through. Vice versa, we open up, swing pass goes out to in. So again, it's not going in to square to in. We're getting more out to in because our bodies are aligned more. Feet, knees, hips and shoulders are aligned more towards the left. That's going to affect path of our swing, like I say, out to in. Club face angle is not going to be directly, not going to be square to our target. It's potentially going to be a little bit left of our target as we're swinging that way. And again, club head speed might come out, ball might be coming out a little bit too hot. So obviously our body alignment is pretty important in terms of if we want the ball to start a little bit more online. So just as a recap, our aim, aim, flush to our target. Nice neutral hold, stance and posture, 7 to 30, favouring that left side. Uh, nice narrow stance to control the speed of our shot, speed of our club, sorry. Get that nice consistent roll uh, or height on our shot. Ball position ever so slightly back of centre. So we can get that descending angle of attack onto the ball. And our body alignment needs to be square to our target so we can make sure we get consistent, smooth roll, smooth end over end roll, more like a putt as opposed to putting a little bit too much spin onto the ball if we get either open or shut. So I'm just going to show you how that should look now. So first I've got my log wedge. So this one's going to be a little bit higher, a little bit softer over that set before we've got something in our way. We're going to be having to go over that. Um, you, not, say, not necessarily used for this shot, but I'm going to show you just an example. So like I say, we've got club nice and square to our target. Nice neutral hold, you can with your hold, not to mention you can go down a little bit for a little bit more control. That's more so recommended with the seven iron, but again you can do it with the uh, a lot better like I'm doing now. Our posture and stance is going to be 70 to 30, get that nice angle of attack onto the ball, favouring that left side. Because right side, if you're a uh, left hand golfer, stance, nice and uh, short, uh, narrow stance, sorry, so we can get, so that allows us to control our speed a little bit better. Ball position ever so slightly back of centre and our body alignment square to our target with that left foot ever so slightly withdrawn. Right, so I'm going to show you shot with the lob wedge first and then the 7 iron so you can see the differences. Right, say so 75% of the way it's landing in the air, then it's rolling about 25% of its way. Nice high lofted, uh, soft landing shot, trajectory is pretty high, whereas this one's going to be a lot lower and you're going to see a lot more run. Same thing. Club face square to the target, grip down a little bit more so with this one. Seven iron. Well, again, do with everything. Neutral hold, posture stance, 70 30, favouring that lead side, uh, nice narrow stance, and then body alignment, ever so square, ever so square, so my feet, uh, knees, hips, and shoulders are square, so that left foot withdrawn ever so slightly. As you can see, it's coming out a lot lower as opposed to that lob wedge, which is going a lot higher. A lot softer shot, which is used not necessarily in this scenario, but scenarios we come across when you're on the golf course. Hope that's helped. Thanks for watching.